The simplest definition of faith, my dear brothers and sisters, is that faith is our response to God's revelation of himself. But how does God reveal himself? He reveals himself to us on one hand through the scriptures, obviously. But in addition, he also reveals himself to us in the daily events of our life, of our mundane life. And this, my dear brothers and sisters, is what runs through the readings of this Sunday. We have the first reading from the prophet Baruch. And Baruch is speaking of the return of the exiles from Babylon. And while most people might look at this as a simple political issue where King Cyrus conquers Babylon and sends the exiles back, Baruch has greater insight into the situation. Baruch is able to meet God in this situation and so he encourages the people to do likewise. Notice the beautiful poetic images that he paints in his writing, in his oracle. He invites the Israelites to remove the garment of sorrow. And he invites them to put on not just any garment or any robe, but he invites them to put on God himself. The robe of God. The diadem of God. What is Baruch trying to do? He is inviting people to look at the ordinary event in their life and to see the extraordinary. And this, my dear brothers and sisters, is also what St. Paul invites the Philippians to do. He begins by praying for the Philippians, praying that God who has begun the good work in them may bring it to fulfillment in the day of Christ Jesus our Lord. But in the meantime, what are they expected to do? In the meantime, he prays. He prays that their love for each other may increase. And in this increase of love, that they may be able to perceive God working in their midst. And in this increase of this perception, they will recognize Christ Jesus among them. This, my dear brothers and sisters, is also what Luke tells us. He speaks of the call of John the Baptist. But notice how he presents the call to us. He begins by painting a scenario, a scenario of the everyday event of Emperor Tiberius, of Pontius Pilate, of other people around. And what does he say? It is in this context that he places John the Baptist. He does this on purpose to invite us to realize that God meets us in the ordinary everyday events of our lives. For someone living at that time in history, knowing that these people were the kings and emperors was an ordinary fact. And in this ordinary history, John the Baptist begins his ministry. But notice what else he does. In recognizing this, John the Baptist also recognizes that he is fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah. He is the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. How is John the Baptist able to relate these things? Simply because he is a keen observer of the here and now. And that's precisely what St. Luke invites us to do. To be keen observers of the here and now because God speaks to us not in a vacuum but in the daily events of our lives. Constantly giving us opportunities, constantly prodding us on, constantly inviting us to go ahead and to experience him and to respond to his revelation. And so my dear brothers and sisters, the readings of today invite us to be keen observers of every little thing that happens in our lives. Nothing happens by mistake. In everything that happens, you and I have an opportunity to experience God, to embrace God, to put on the robe of God himself. Just as Baruch invited the exiles to do this, you and I are also invited to do the same. And therefore, look at the situations in your lives, whether they are good or bad or don't look all that great. God is speaking to you and he wants to encounter you in these situations. But more importantly, he wants you to encounter him in these situations, to remove 
the myopic vision and to look keenly and deeply with greater insight into what he's doing in your life. And when you and I recognize these things, then like St. John the Baptist, like the people of the exile, you and I have a chance to fulfill prophecy. You and I becomes, become God's message to the world, being agents of transformation, agents of change. My prayer, my dear brothers and sisters, for you and me, is the same as St. Paul. May God who has begun this good work in us, bring it to fulfillment in the day of Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.